this one to be sure. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, using Parcel and Globus Compute to port running jobs between uh, HPC resources. Uh, so imagine you have a really large, long-running job, you know, 150 nodes, 200 nodes, 500 nodes that you need to run for, for weeks at a time in order to do the, the computations um, like we do with, with SESTI in our simulations. Uh, the odds of getting a single allocation for that is infinitesimally small, uh, just because, you know, you, you're not the only one using the resources. So it could be, you know, days or weeks before you can get another allocation to, you know, March another couple of days through your computation. So it could mean a lot of uh, downtime for uh, what you're trying to uh, to compute. But what if you could take your stop job and transfer it somewhere else to keep it running, then move it back to your preferred HPZ resource uh, when you get your next allocation? You can do this now, um, but it takes a, a decent amount of manual work for, you know, try to transferring your files, setting up the environment, potentially compiling code, you know, starting the job, things like that. So to make this easier, we're developing a workflow tool based on Parcel and Globus Compute that will take care of all of the, the nitty gritty of the file movement and the environments and the compiling, et cetera. Um, all you need to do is tell it, you know, where to run the job and what resources you need as far as number of machines, memory, et cetera. Uh, so how will it work? <clears throat> so the, the user will have to, set up a few things like a, a Globus compute endpoint on potential uh, areas where they're going to want to, you know, run this, run their code. Uh, on their home machine, uh, they'll have the, you know, our, our framework running that will allow them to submit the jobs, check the status, stop jobs and move them, um, and things like that. Uh, and while Globus compute will need, to, will be used as the communication infrastructure between you know, your machine and the HPZ resources where you're running, um, you don't actually need a, a full-blown endpoint. Uh, and we're following the, the fire and forget model. So you can, you know, do one thing for your job and, you know, close your machine, go home, whatever, come back, check on it later. Um, like you can do, you know, currently do with Funk X and, or Globus Compute, sorry. Um, and you'll also have to have some way of transferring files uh, between the HPZ resources, uh, whether it's through Globus, FTP, uh, RSync, uh, with your credentials, and we're aiming to use the uh, parcel data provider classes to do the the transferring um, whenever we can. <laughs> so what the user won't see is behind it. There's uh, a database that holds all of the information about your endpoints and what executor, parcel executors you can use on the different ones. It would be able to track where everything's running. Uh, their status uh, could potentially be used to provide some variety of provenance for um, the, the full of your workflow. Uh, and it'll be using uh, YAML files to essentially do the communication. You know, you need to, you know, stop your job and send it here. Here's the information you need to be able to do that. So here's just a, a quick example of um, a workflow. So you've got to get your local machine here and you're saying, okay, I want to, you know, run this job. So you, you send out a, a request to, uh, you know, the available resources. You prefer this one, uh, but it says it's not available. So oh, I'll start on, you know, start here on this compute resource one. And you get the, you know, you, you launch it, you get a, a UUID back uh, so that you can keep track of it. And periodically, you'll just kind of keep querying, say, "Okay, can I can I move my job yet?" No, it's still not available. So we'll just keep running and compute one. Um, eventually, it says, "Yep, you can get a, an allocation for what you want." So you you tell compute one, "Okay, time to to shut down, transfer any files that are needed for restarting the job from you to your preferred resource." And then once those files are there, uh, you launch your job on resource two. And, you know, you can sit here and you can monitor what, you know, how it's running. And then eventually the job completes, you get your results back or it says that it's done. And then you can uh, get the job status and it's complete and everything is happy. You got your work done uh, faster than you were, you know, you would have if you had to wait for the, the, the second compute resource to be available um, potentially. And uh, so that's the aim of our, uh, of our project. And I will take uh, any questions at this point. Thanks.
Thank you. Any questions? I guess this isn't a question for Doug specifically, but I'm, I'm kind of curious. Is this is something like this something that Argon would be interested in or supportive of? Um, sure, we could have a conversation. All right. Uh, anyone on Zoom? One question. Is this um, from Hey yeah. Kyung? Is this something that is implemented already? Uh, no, it's a, it's a work in progress. I mean, one comment I'll make is this sounds a lot like a tool we currently have at the facility called Balsam. So I don't know. <laughs> it might, there might be some overlap. We might have some. Okay. okay. So you, you heard that? I heard that. I I heard most of it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. One more. My question is about compiling code. You mentioned it would take care of deploying the code. What's the plan for that? Um, well, that will be kind of user dependent. Um, like with with uh, with Sesti, we have a thing where we just we run a, a command line and it compiles the code under what you need. For you know, you, you you give it the specification and it, it compiles what you need for you. Uh so it would it would kind of vary. Um we're aiming to provide, you know, something where you can say, you know, you know, clone this git repo and you know, run CMake. We're not not aiming to, to go to go tremendously deep, but be able to provide the infrastructure of okay, yeah, you have to do a build step before you can be before you can run it. You know, here's the the, the typical steps you need to do. Thank you. Question mm -hmm. from Christopher. Do you have any advice about reproducibility? Uh, so like reproducibility on like your the, the code you're running or uh, in what context? Yeah. Yeah, the reproducibility. If you're moving these things all over the place, presumably <clears throat> you most people like to be able to reproduce the same experiment that they did a year ago. And uh, since you're moving across different machines and things like that, uh, this might get a little complicated. Um, yeah, it, it, it could. Um, but I would, from, from my point of view, I would look more at the reproducibility of the results. The, the you know, in theory that the computation you run, you know, here should, you know, within, you know, computational errors get this be the same result from you know some other HPZ resource. Um, yeah, you wouldn't be able to necessarily exactly reproduce the oh I ran you know steps one through fifteen on this machine, and you know sixteen through twenty five on this machine, et cetera, et cetera. That that type of reproducibility would be more challenging because you'd have to you know schedule all the resources appropriately. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's, some calculations are are sensitive to uh, depends on what you're doing, but yeah, yeah. People that I work with really like bit for bit reproducibility, and I've been trying to talk them off of that <laughs> notion, yes. but it's not easy. 